Hey everyone, doing our vlog today on the squeaky wheel, which I always get a kick out of because in collections, customer service, things of that nature that we do often, you kind of get pegged as being the squeaky wheel and it quite honestly has a lot of truth to it. Uh, whether it be leadership or the way things are done, uh, often gets crushed, they get pushed out of the way when that feedback can be priceless. So I just wanted to hop into a couple points because this has been a key difference for me at Dedicated for us as a team and as a company, and also for just enjoying working here because it's a, it's a culture that fosters feedback. Hey everyone, Sean Smith here with Dedicated Commercial Recovery in Roseville, Minnesota. I'm the founder and CEO. So the first thing I'd say is you have to really foster and cultivate and create that environment. And especially when it comes to the leaders, your leaders have to model that they can take feedback, not only that they can take it, that they desire it. It's not the Sean show, it's not the leader show, it is what is the best way to do something. And if somebody has a better way of doing it, they can bring it to the table. Or if they think something is hurting the organization or slowing the process down, they can bring that to the leaders. And if the leaders aren't modeling that, then the organization won't model that. And I will just tell you, I dedicate it as an example. There's just no room for a leadership other than one that not only is willing to take feedback, but actually asks for it and desires it so we can do it the best possible way. Uh, the next thing is this, and it's something, it's, it's very commonly said, but it isn't very commonly followed, is that you privately correct people and you publicly praise them. And that is huge. You just don't have the opportunity to get on someone in front of a group or if someone's bringing you feedback and you just absolutely are dismissive or don't care, you want to privately correct that person and publicly praise them. And I try to publicly praise people who challenge that. Now, again, our monthly scrum where we all talk, maybe that's not the best place to challenge the status quo and maybe there's some coaching that needs to be involved but you wanna do that privately. And you know the most important way you're, to do that is to model it. So if you're modeling it, other people are gonna do that. And how you can model this is to actually do things that foster a culture of feedback. One of the exercises I did about a month ago with our team is during our monthly scrum, I asked the team to go up and write on the whiteboard, what is it that I'm not good at? Or for lack of better words, what do I suck at? And at first, everyone kind of thought it was a joke. Like, there's no way we're going to go up and write what the CEO and the founder is not good at. But I was dead serious. I wanted them to know that I can recognize that there's a couple things that I'm okay at, but there's a lot of stuff I'm not okay at. And that's why I hire amazing people around me to be on the team because I just, I can't be the end all be all for everything. I have to hire experts and people who have different personality types, different natural abilities in me and surround myself with those people and, and after some um, motivation, people got up there and started writing things and at the end of that, um, the people that did, uh, they all received cash for doing that. And the point was to say, hey, we're gonna reward people who challenge the status quo, who will challenge a leader, who are willing to point out what's not optimal in an organization and I mess up all the time. And doing exercises like that really help. I think another thing though is to realize no organization just or really group of people is going to do this perfectly. You're just going to mess it up. I messed it last week. I messed up with my team and I had to go out and acknowledge and own that and apologize for it and try to understand what it's like to be on the receiving side of someone who's not receiving feedback, who's not privately criticizing. And that can be really tough to be on the receiving end. And it can be really tough as a leader to make those mistakes, but you gotta own that and you gotta move forward and realize you're just not gonna do it perfectly. And finally, I'll say this is that feedback, good, bad, or ugly is priceless. And it's not just that you get it, it's then what you do with it. If you don't act on that, if you don't make the necessary changes, once you can even get the feedback, you're not gonna retain clients you're not gonna retain good team members because they're not gonna feel like they add value, they're not gonna feel like they're heard, and you will never reach your potential. You'll never grow to the size you want to because you're gonna be limited by the fact that it's being run in a dictatorship style instead of an open feedback, 
forum where leaders and anyone on the team can provide that feedback and create the best output. So I hope this has helped. As always, thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment, share. We appreciate that so much. And as always, God bless.